God bless you. This is Rosemary Santiago from On Wings of an Eagle. Today we will be speaking about the love letter. Let's start the program with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks, Lord, for this opportunity. I ask, Lord, that that you may touch the lives, Lord. We are in very troubled times, so many things, very chaotic, Lord, all over the place, all over the world, Father. And we need to know that you love us, Father. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our lives, Lord. Glorify yourself, Lord, like you know how to do, Lord. I give you thanks, Lord, that I was able to to do this program today. Uh, I am a miracle today, so I give you thanks, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're going to start because everybody always uh, speaks about the love, right? And I'm always in my preachings or teachings, whatever you want to call it, I'm always uh, quoting, quoting John 3.16, but instead of me starting with John 3.16, I'm going to start from the very beginning. This is something that people overlook, and I try to, uh, oh my goodness. It's so strange because I just uh, uh, I just looked at one of the ancient names, Matan, and it means the gift of love. So I know I'm in the right uh, the right word today. I think the the very first not 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 only in his creation, but I think the very the very 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 first. A uh, sign of love is after man, Adam and Eve, had sinned. And um, he wasn't going to leave them like that. A lot of people uh, focus on, oh, and God cast them out. But he didn't cast them out right away. He did something very special. Here he had made a promise. In uh, chapter 3, verse 15, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I will put en enmity between thee and the woman. He's talking to not the reptile serpent, but Satan himself, the enemy. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his hip. Heal. You know that the Lord, from the very beginning, let me see if I can find that. I had jotted it down today. 1 Peter 1.20. 1 Peter 1.20. So you could see how God is sovereign. He's omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God. And uh, being that he is God... He knows all things. He knew how things were going to work out. He knew, uh, first of all, and there, there are certain people that are saying that uh, when, when, the, when the Lord created Adam and Eve, he created also the angels. And that sounds very contradictory because of the fact that um, it would take a while for for Hallel, who everybody calls Lucifer. Lucifer is from the Vulgate, Latin Vulgate. His name is Hallel. And it would take him a while before he starts noticing himself, you know, that, that kind of, uh, uh, oh, I am the wonder, I am the last... Uh, Pepsi or Coca-Cola in the desert or, you know, I am so beautiful. I am one. I am everything kind of attitude. It takes a while. Nobody uh, just comes up with something like that. 
So definitely they had to have been created and created with choice because he chose to rebel like uh, one third of the uh, angels also uh, chose to rebel and also the uh, fallen angels of chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6. And then those who remain, the majority, they chose to be faithful. But let's read what it says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Let me see if I have that right. Yes, I do. It says... Let me, let me start with 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish. Excuse me. I don't know if I'm going to end up sneezing or whatever. Uh, allergies. So it says, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So they already had it. Uh, a plan, a very special plan. Another thing that took place was that not only was the promise there, we're talking about the love letter, and uh, a lot of people don't see God as a being that loves. But you know what the real problem is that nobody really wants to submit. You know, uh, people take pleasure in doing things that are contrary. So it's very simple, very easy for you to say there is no God. Oh, that's not, and this is, and that isn't, because it, it just kind of blurts out of our mouth. But you know, one day we all, even this loving God uh, uh, draws a line. We can either go his way and have things much better, or we can rebel. And what I don't understand is why people choose the temporary things here when we can have an eternal life. That is his love. That was his intention. Even after he knew the rebellion in heaven, the rebellion here on earth, everything that the Lord did to, to restore so what he did was he sacrificed an animal. There were no animal sacrifices in the very beginning. So the first animal sacrifice was to cover them physically because they were nude. They didn't know that they were nude because they were covered by the glory. They did not know sin until, until they, uh, Eve was tempted, Eve gave in, Eve handed the man that received the order from God was Adam. And he gave up his right to sin. So, so we know that with the precious blood of Christ. Now we're talking about, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world without blemish and without spot. They could not pinpoint anything on him. They would in invent things. They would pay people to say lies because they could not pinpoint anything against him. That's the reason why uh, there's a difference between you giving yourself up and someone taking your life. He gave it. 
He was the only one perfect. He was 100% man, 100% God. The 100% God was the only one that was able to uh, terminate the sentence of death on his creations. So it says, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. So we, we speak of uh, the year 2020, and a lot of people think that it's just, you know, just a date put because uh, uh, one year passes, a second year comes. But we're actually speaking about since the Lord gave his life from the time of the crucifixion and on, which is very important. We have to uh, be able to understand which uh, times we live in. Okay, so now let's go to John. From 14, chapter 3, from 14 to 17. Chapter 3, from 14 to 17. It says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever uh, excuse me, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That was, his intention was not to condemn. He wanted to save. But the very, very, uh, uh, it, it's kind of curious how, uh, chapter 315 is the promise. And 315 here in, in the uh, Gospel of John, it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So here, uh, uh, the seed of the woman is not only the Lord Jesus Christ, but what he has done to make it possible. Because just like uh, he died well we died to ourselves remember the lord jesus christ said whoever wants to follow him must deny self that's the dying when you put down self and you have to carry your cross every day and then follow him that that's that's the process the dying first the picking up your cross, whatever it is. It's not easy living in a world like today. Some people, it's emotional, some uh, physical, uh, but we have to deny ourselves first. Uh, we have to decide who we are going to listen, listen to, either to the flesh and not this kind of flesh, because this we need, this is our body, it holds the spirit and it holds the soul. But when he's talking about the flesh, it's the carnality. It's the uh, abominable desire that humans have. It could be, uh, 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 how would you say, uh, spending a lot, uh, being spoiled, uh, uh, into adultery, into fornication, into pornography. That's the carnality. That's the part that, that, that is manifest by what you do. That would be something like this. Let me read it to you. It's better this way. 
so you can get an idea. And I have spoken about this, chapter 5 of Galatians. What is manifest is what is shown. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that is the reason why for God so loved the world that he gave, there is the gift of love. Okay, let's go to 1 John. Here's another thing. 1 John. First John chapter 316. And uh, I am one that doesn't believe in coincidences. It's not even in the Bible coincidence. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren if you are Christ-like, you will do for the brethren, but also to the neighbor, right? Okay. Now, here is what I understand as the love. Okay, let me, let me bring you to the very beginning of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7. Everybody knows this. It's the child that is born unto a virgin. And you're going to see the qualities. Uh, seven. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That means God with us. And then you have... 9 6 it says for unto us a child is born mind you that was hundreds hundreds of years before this uh, miracle took place unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace and it goes on describing here are his attributes chapter i believe it's 11 okay it says and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of jesse the genealogy if you look at the genealogy um jesse was the father of David. But if you look before, uh, Boaz and uh, Ruth gave uh, uh, forth a son. His name is Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David. And you look at all that genealogy, you'll find it mostly in uh, uh, chapter 1 of the gospel of Matthew. It's very important. The genealogy for the, for the Jew is very, very important. So much that in the uh, olden times, uh, there was a, a, a time, especially, I think it's written, it's either, either or, or both. Um, Ezra and Nehemiah, when they were looking for some of the people that came back after the exile, they couldn't find their genealogy. So because of that, until they proved themselves to be of the priesthood, they were not allowed to do, to partake of any of what is called the sacred things like the bread and things like that. So it's very, very important. 
It says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. That does not mean that you're afraid of God. It means that you respect him. Okay, now let's go to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61, 1, and we'll see my line of thought about love, okay? It started from the very beginning. The Lord had uh, uh, preordained this was supposed to take place because he knew there was going to be the fall of man. He was interested more in the fall of his creations, right? Okay, Isaiah 61, 1. And here, there's an expression being pronounced by Isaiah in this chapter. And we'll see how it connects to the time of Jesus. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. It wasn't Isaiah that was talking. Isaiah was prophesying. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings. Now the word anointed, Mashiach, is one who is anointed. And he was to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And it goes on to speaking about the proclaiming uh, the acceptable year of the Lord. But look at all these things. He was anointed to preach good tidings, not bad news, good tidings unto the meek and sent me to bind. What do you bind? Not talking about binding someone. It's talking about when someone is wounded. So I have the uh, definitions, the word meek, the word anav. It means not meek like, like that. It means someone who's weak and afflicted. When someone is suffering, when they have uh, wounds, inner wounds, there are ones that are more intense than the very ones that are outward, right? So he was anointed to preach good tidings unto the meek, unto the anab, the weak and the afflicted. The word he hath sent, the word is shalach, it means to shoot forth. If you look at Isaiah 55, and it all depends on what comes out, right? If one is in the will of the Lord, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth. There's the word. Uh, shalak. Out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void. In other words, when he says something, it's going to do exactly what he said but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So it's nice to keep yourself right in the will of the Father. So when I looked at the word, shalach means a, a projectile. It could be a projectile of attack. That's why we also love, I'm talking about the love letter that God sent. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people don't want him. But as things start developing, as they start unfolding in these end times, it's going to be a lot of people who have been waiting to be helped and they are going to experience in these end times before the great tribulation there's going to be a rapture before that rapture things terrible things are going to take place 
we are going to go through things. It's called persecution. We're starting to see all these kind of things. So God so loved the world that now, because in, it, it, when the Lord was speaking to the disciples, he says, I am, I am the light of this world. But then he, then he turns around to his disciples and you are the light of this world. You are the salt of the earth. As the salt preserves, like in the olden times, when there was no refrigerator, they used to pack it in salt. I know about that because my husband and I were butchers and to certain of the either pig's feet or the, uh, the, the, the cow's feet, they're put into salt so it doesn't uh, uh, get messed up until the person receives and does whatever they, they're going to, you know, make with it. So, bind, the word is ha a habash. It means a bandage, a healer, physician who heals the wounds of the, uh, of, you know, of the state. Okay, I won't go into this yet, but I'll go and make the reference afterwards. You'll see the connection. Brokenhearted, that's in uh, 61 1. The brokenhearted, the word is shaved. It means crushed. They're crippled. They're wrecked. They're maimed. You know how many people have, uh, have been, how would you say this, victims? of rape, victims of human trafficking, and words and actions and things that are done to them break them up. They start them when they're young, when they get uh, older, they feel that they uh, have no use for life. They, they feel that, yes, they belong to the person that has had them for a long time. They've been boxed. They've been caged. They've been passed around. These people need, right? They need this. The spirit of the Lord has to be upon his church because the Lord has anointed to preach good tidings unto the meek unto the weak and afflicted, unto and to bind. We have to heal. We have to take time out. Sometimes we will meet people that we don't talk with, but we hear, we, we hear, we, we, we take time out, we listen. All they need is to talk that out. That's the love of God. If we don't have the love of God, they will not heal. They're brokenhearted. They've been crushed. They've been crippled. They've been wrecked. They've been maimed. There's a lot of people that are maimed that you don't see it on the outside. But on, in, on the inside and here, they are maimed. They have no, no hope at all. Okay, the word... Proclaim. Kara means to cry out, to invite, be called out, to be chosen. Call forth. How many times? Because life is not easy. And the calling may not be easy either. And there are times when we are battling because of certain conditions. And because that's a responsibility, it doesn't matter what your condition is, how much or of what importance is the life of someone else? Because I could be in pain and God can alleviate until he decides to either heal me or take me, one or the other. He is the owner. He is the Lord. But there are people that sometimes in that little moment, they can take their life. If I don't do what I'm called to do, I don't want no badges. I get into these comments, things, 
and I'm the one that wins badges all over the place. I don't need a badge. What I need is that the word of God touches and does something in the lives of the people because it is his love reflected in me so that I can love, so I can preach, so I can teach, so I can educate. It says liberty. So the word here to proclaim liberty to the captives. The word is dero. It means flowing. It means free run. When you're messed up in drugs, when you are the one that's been trafficked, you don't feel anything flowing. You're filled with fear, with confusion, with pain. You're struggling. Okay, the word spontaneity of outflow. It's pure and so clear. That's what liberty is. It, it is so clear. And you could almost also touch it. It says to the captives, Shava, taken in war. If we go into here, into Ephesians, this is a war that, that all humans, all humans, the only difference is that when you know how to fight that spiritual warfare, if you know how to fight, if you know uh, uh, the one that's, up front, the one that knows all the strategies, the one that can teach you how to warfare. It says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Look what Romans says. Roman, I think it's 13, 14. 13, 14. It says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Because we go through, everybody thinks that lust is only uh, 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 having to do with, 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 with going to bed with someone or pornography, but when you desire a lot of things, that's lustful. And it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not, even though they could, people can be used, we're not really wrestling against them but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, that's the reason why the father had to send his son. He knew that you and I weren't going to make it. I don't care if you're within the church. I don't care if you've been 47 years like myself in the things of the Lord. We battle every single day. You wake up in the morning, things come to your head. You're doing something that, that, that's very, very important. You have distractions. This is purposely done to keep us away from the things of God. Like I said, it's not easy having pain every single day. Pain can also be a distraction. And if I don't put that pain in the hands of God, the Lord, until I get the healing, I will be distracted. I would look for another way. Maybe I could stay laying down in bed. Maybe I could be watching uh, TV all night long to the following day and not do what I'm supposed to be doing. My responsibility is to teach, to educate, to bring out the truth from his very word. Okay, and it says, and the opening of the prison, the word is pekah 
Koach, it means an opening of eyes wide, jail delivery, salvation for sin. There's a lot of people that live the way they want to live. They do whatever they want to do. And like I said, they can say there is no God. But there will be a time and God is going to call it to, right to the point. I send my only begotten son. I send people to preach the word of God just the way it is. Because that is the love letter is the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people don't want to accept him. You know, there is no other name under heaven, given among men, which we would be saved by. No one, no name, no man, no woman, no child, no, no animal, no body. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, book of Revelation says that when they see him come in his glory, they're going to wish that the mountains... And, and, and the rocks fall on them. They're not going to be able to die. God is not going to allow death during that time, except the death that will be established for those who receive the mark of the beast. It says, to them that are bound, the word is a said. It's, the word is, uh, it's a pronoun that means to be taken. Ephesians 4, 18. 4, 18. I like, I like uh, connecting the, the scriptures. Okay. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. And the word scotizo of the eyes, the understanding, the darkness, and of the mind to obscure, to cover with darkness. This is... Uh, in this, that was Ephesians. Ephesians was written in in uh, in Greek, so we have Greek words. Okay. Now look at Luke, so you understand what love is all about. Okay, four eighteen to twenty one, Luke. Luke, by the way, was a physician, and he was the writer of the Gospel of Luke and also the book of the Acts of the Apostles, Luke 4. And uh, sometimes in the, in the writings, it was originally Luke, Gospel of Luke and Acts was written to a friend of his called Theophilus. And sometimes he's speaking in first, first, uh, person. Then he'll talk about, he's talking about Peter or Barnabas or they. But whenever it includes him, he always speaks in first person. Okay. Luke chapter four, 18 to 21. And here is where that Isaiah 61, 1 becomes reality. It says, yeah, I'm going to read here. Okay, I'm going to start with 16 so you get the full picture. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. In other words, he stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. It's that's that language. We, we say Isaiah. 
And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? You know what's so sad? Because in uh, Luke chapter 19 he's having a conversation with the Pharisees and these people oh they want to see signs and they had already seen so many signs especially with Lazarus uh, in fact they had planned to kill Lazarus and we're talking about the love of God how far does God go to let you and myself understand how big, how expanded, how extended. <laughs> I don't know what other word I could use is his love. With all the uh, miracles that have happened in so many, not only here, I am a miracle. My heart stopped. I had stomach cancer. God healed me. I had rheumatoid arthritis. God healed me. Jesus wasn't around. He didn't come up to me. But his word is true. That's why it says in Isaiah, the word that comes out of his mouth doesn't maintain void. It's not, excuse me, it's not empty. It does exactly what pleases him. He is a loving God. Not too many people are interested. And it's very, very sad and unfortunate for so many that have declared being Christian that in these terrible end times, the most dangerous of all times, they decide that they don't even know if Jesus was really God or if this is true. Now look what it says in um, chapter 5, 30, 31, because he had already said what he came for. He was anointed for these things. Uh, you have the situation where a young girl, a damsel, 12 years old, and her father is within the, the, the Pharisees. He's a, he's a, uh, what they call, a, um, they call him prince, principal, and she's dying. And you have a woman 12 years with blood issue. Isn't it so strange how that little girl is growing up and this woman has 12 years, 12 years of the same, 12 years of age of this child. And God does a number. This woman's blood issue is dried up just by touching the, uh, the hem of his garment. And this little girl was spoken to 12 years. So many things. Why did the Lord come besides to save humanity? All the ailments, all the conditions, all diseases, all the stuff that's going on. 
He died, but he resurrected. He didn't stay in the grave. He still performs the most awesome things. People don't want it. Just like a lot of them didn't want it. When he said something that, that didn't go with the flow with them, a lot of them turned away. Most likely they were in the crowd that said crucify him. It's the same thing nowadays. There is no change. It's gotten worse. There's a lot more people that are being lost. That is not the, the, the how would you say, the, 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 uh, the feeling of, of a Christian. We, we want people to be saved. We know where we're going. God has promised it. He is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Now look at chapter 5, 30 to 31, and it says, It says, <clears throat> let me start with 27. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi. Levi is his, his uh, Hebrew name. It's the same Matthew that wrote the, the book, the gospel of Matthew. Sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And like I said, the love letter, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, uh, we are eternal. This isn't. The outer shell is not eternal. That goes back to where it came from. But we have a spirit and we have a soul and we are eternal. So it's either heaven or hell. I know a lot of people don't like to hear uh, uh, hell mentioned or uh, calling out sin and stuff like that. But if I don't do that, then if you are lost and I have the opportunity to tell you so, then your blood would be in my hands. But since I am not a murderer, I don't go out killing anyone. I certainly don't hate because hate is a form of killing. You can say and call me a hater just because I don't accept sin. God pulled me out of the muck and mire. I was in sin until he made a transformation. That transformation comes from having an intimate relationship with God. And that is the most easiest. You have friends, friends that have been friends for a long time. What's the secret of your friendship? Or even that you've been with a boyfriend and you just get along so well. What is it that makes you get along so well with him? You know things about him. He knows things about you. You both are in harmony. It's the same thing with the Lord, the Father, especially with his creations. He is, a, how would you say, a perfect father. He, if, if there are people here on earth that make great parents, that are a blessing to their children, what do you say about God? How much of a blessing, how much of a bigger blessing do we get by having a good relationship with the Heavenly Father? Because He's faithful. He is true. 
His word is true. It's secure. We don't have to worry about that. Peace in midst of all of these things sounds almost ridiculous, right? Almost so crazy. Well, I have felt peace in midst of coronavirus or anything else. Everything that I've gone through, everything that I'm going through. It's the only thing that keeps me alive, that peace that comes from my relationship with my maker. So I want to invite you this afternoon. This is serious business. This is all of your eternity. Where are you going to spend your eternity? You can either come over on my side, accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have promises and he's faithful, or you can say on the other side, because there's two masters. There's the Lord and there's Satan. Satan is the Lord of the world. Satan allows anybody to do whatever. But you know something? Satan, the demons, the unclean spirits, the fallen angels, and humans that decide that they don't want to serve God, they're all going to the same place, hell. Different levels according to the sins. So you can imagine Satan and the unclean spirits and all, all the ones that were up there. It's got to be great. It's got to be very, very, very great. Increased according to the works. If God blesses according to the works, also there is torment according to the works of the flesh, of the desires, of the attitudes, of concepts and ideologies, and you name it. Because this for everyone, all colors, sizes, whatever. And this is very serious. You decide. So I want to lead you into prayer. And it's something very simple. Just follow these words. And be truthful to yourself and truthful to God, but you cannot mount God. Whatever a man sows, that soul he shall reap. God, I have sinned against you greatly. I ask for your forgiveness. I ask that your Holy Spirit lead me to the truth every single day. I accept the sin sacrifice of your son he washes me in his blood, and I ask you to put my name in the book of life. I ask you these things in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I give you thanks, Lord, for this opportunity, and I ask, Lord, that you may heal just like it speaks, Lord, in Isaiah 61.1, Father. Put your hand on every situation, spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, and socially. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.